Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. We're here tonight to restart our deep dive into the deep end of the Kate Goslin swimming pool. And guys, these waters are shark infested. So be sure to bring your flotation device. Gotta do something about this killer shark. People are dying. I think that we should stay out of the water. No. Something must be done about this killer shark. I think that because this is a very ocean specific thing, if we physically stay out of the water, uh, we will be 100% less likely to be attacked by the shark. That is insane. You are being an insane person. You are li literally crazy, and no one's gonna stop going in the water. So. I feel like if we tell people, don't go in the water or you will die. And then they go into the water and they die. It's kind of uh, on them at that <laughs> point. Fight this shark with my bare hands. I'm gonna take a boat out and fight this son of a bitch. Or uh, you can stay on Stop. land uh, with your nonsense ideas, okay? It's not gonna work. We are going to go blow this shark up with a torpedo. I'm just gonna keep reminding people uh, that there is a shark in the water. And if they go into the water, there will be a shark. And I'm gonna go home now where shark activity doesn't impact my oh, life. No, shark that son of a bitch knows what he's doing. He's taunting it's a us. wild animal. And we're starting this swim with what I like to call chapter 50 because these sections aren't really numbered. So let's call it chapter 50. And it's all about the most interesting player on this entire stage. Aunt Jody. Further back, and you know, they would say, Aunt Jody, I don't like the cameras on every vacation with us. I don't like them, you know. And, and two, you know, kids have bad time, bad moments. They they cry, and and having a camera zoom in on, you know, a crying child. I mean, this is just this is this should not be a form of entertainment. Aunt Jody was a character that showed up in like the first several seasons of John and Kate Plus Eight, and she was the only person who came from Kate's family who showed up repeatedly in the series. She was their loving, kind gentle, always there for them, babysitter with red hair. And I know that makes it hard on Jody. It's hard on us. We were standing there and he came over, pushed me over and Leah hit her eye. Cookie, uh, we just continue to work with her and her strong personality. And there's sweet, wonderful Maddie, always forever ready with a loving kick to a brother's crotch. That was the day that Maddie was in very much trouble when she got home. And so Aunt Jody is Kate Goslin's sister-in-law. Jody's husband is Kate's biological brother, her younger brother, who she was allegedly very close to. And she has a lot to say about him in some of her journals, as well as on a really crazy interview that she did. But of course, Kate's always turning on everyone. But in the first couple of seasons, we saw this redheaded vixen acting like a hero for Kate and John because she was constantly stepping in to watch the kids and allowing TLC to film her while she did it. So it gave them something, somewhere to go to have a different filming atmosphere, to see the kids interact in another environment, to play with cousins, and to just have other people be involved on the show. But but of course, the biggest part of all of was that Kate got a break from having to have other babysitters take care of her kids. Now she's got the redheaded one doing the job for at least a period of time until she sends them back to Kate's house and then she'll bring Joan, the elderly lady, out from the church to watch the kids in the basement. Nobody wanted to come downstairs and leave us alone. Okay, so chapter 50 is entitled The Goslin Family Hardships. And this is where Aunt Jody implodes the entire background of the show. Everything that Kate has fought to create and TLC has fought to maintain image-wise for Kate is completely torn apart when Aunt Jody goes rogue. Cameras around. They have told me personally, I, I don't like- enough, Of cool. course, yeah, we watched them quite a bit. Yeah. Um, about a year ago and, and further back. And, you know, they would say, Aunt Jody, I don't like the cameras on every vacation with us. I don't like them, you know. Hoffman writes, Kate's sister-in-law, Aunt Jody, and her brother, Kevin, were as close to John and Kate back in the early days as anyone. So they were privy to so many personal details. Do you talk to Kate and John. Yeah. We haven't seen the kids in a while, which is hard. Um, but yeah, our relationship has definitely been strained now. Um, what we hope is that they will kind of come around, see the effects, see what's most important. Mm -hmm. and, They're very uh, lost right now. They're very blinded by all of this media and this, you know, the fame and the fortune. In 2008, Aunt Joni stepped forward and she published a blog that talked a lot of schmack about Kate Goslin. Now, we will talk about later um, what 
some of Jody's motivations may have been. And we need to dissect some of that um, to really understand a little bit more about what's going on here. And every time you go to the newsstand, there's another cover, of course, another cover, another of course. cover. And it is time to really put priorities first, which is they say they're children, but clearly their actions are showing that. But this is what Jody was writing on her blog in 2008. When the sex tuplets were about six months old, an email was going around from Kate and John asking for financial help. They were telling a tale of having absolutely no money and not knowing how they were going to survive. I received the email and it was very detailed in the information about how to contact the utility and mortgage company to help pay their bills. So they didn't even want to receive the money from them or the checks from them. They're just like, go straight to our lenders and make sure that it's taken care of. Sign on the line for us, guys. They say their children is their priority. They say their children is their priority, but clearly... It is not. This must be so painful for you to have this, what seemed to start so innocently, spill over into uh, this kind of national yes. sensation. Yes. And it can't be easy to imagine for you. Jody goes on to write, There was also a fund set up through their church. There was a huge outpouring of generosity from their community. Family and friends stepped up and gave money, offered time, tried to help in every way imaginable. But guess what? Of course, in standard Kate Goslin fashion, secrets and lies are behind all of it. And it's about to be discovered because it was only a few months later when disbelief set in for Jody. Okay, Jody is a nurse. She is married to um, Kate's brother, Kevin. I find it interesting that they, on the show, they appear to live in a beautiful, large, well-maintained home. But then again, they only have a couple of kids. <laughs> so I guess it's a little bit easier to live like that if you're not trying to feed so many mouths. Um, but she's a nurse and she works full time and then she helps Kate um, on the show when she's available. But Jody writes here, disbelief set in a few months later. We found out by Kate and John's own admission that all along they had a rather large sum of money in their savings account throughout all that time that they were begging for money early on. Let's just say it was more than I made in a year working full time when I came out of nursing school. They had been giving everyone this story of being financially destitute when all along a very wealthy family member was supporting them. Most of you who have followed the rest of this series, you're aware that that wealthy family member was most likely John's dad, who had a dental practice. And according to accounts in this book, he was spending an awful lot of money on John and Kate and their children. He's the reason why they had what they had in the first place. He's the reason why Kate was able to seek out infertility treatments in the first place, allegedly, according to Hoffman, and he was giving them a heck of a lot of money. So Jody wasn't too happy when she realized all of this was going on. And she writes, when they were questioned, their response was along the lines that they shouldn't have to use their own money to support their family. It's society's obligation. We have eight kids. We've got eight children over here, Jody. Like you go to work and give half your salary to us. Jody wasn't happy, but she kind of brushed it under the rug, kept supporting them, and then they got on this show, okay? And I, I'm starting to think that there was a little bit of envy, frustration, maybe jealousy in the background. She knew all of this had happened early on, and now they're getting onto a show and making an awful lot of money. And yet still, Jody agreed to join the show, to babysit and appear on the show for Kate and John. All right, here's what else Jody had to say on her blog going forward. I actually hadn't even thought about any of that until I heard the story they were telling at the churches. The story, it just wasn't entirely true. I know that from my own experience. I tried to understand why they would tell such a story and lead people to believe that was still the way they were living. Had they run that story over in their minds so much they began to believe it? I also knew there were college funds set up for the kids. Were they lying about that too? So she's saying like afterwards, after all these people had given money, after the father... Um, in law, John's dad had supplied a lot of money. Kate is still going into churches and she's making these speeches where she's like, we're going to be destitute. We could use any help we can. We just have these tiny little miracles. And, you know, I think God would really like you to help us keep our little miracles and the best Jimbery and Gap clothing available, all matching for them. 
Jody writes, to top it all off, I knew the part of their contract with the network included being paid for every appearance. Let's say for about three to four appearances, they could make as much as the average person makes in a year. Did they let anyone at the churches know that? So I picture kind, generous people sitting in a church listening to tales of financial hardship, led to believe it's still this way, offering plates being passed and people who really can't afford it digging deep into their pockets. And I totally agree with that. Um, That's something that frustrates me in general in life. There's just like a karma thing that I don't understand. When people are walking around um, with beautiful clothing and fancy luxury cars and their kids are all extremely well-dressed and maintained, and behind the scenes they have a ton of savings sitting, but then they will come forward and ask for you to help fundraise or give money for whatever special charity that they're doing. And when I see someone that I know is struggling pull a few dollars out of their own purse, it really... Uh, makes me feel uncomfortable. I always say you should only give what you can afford. And if you're struggling, don't give it to people who are just asking for it. You have to be really careful who you choose to be generous with because people do take advantage of those of us who you know want to give to others. And then Jody writes, why mislead good people? Speak at the churches, collect your money from the network, promote your show, but just don't be dishonest. Don't tell people your kids don't have a college fund and don't continue to tell tales of being financially destitute. So Jody just goes on to say, it's my opinion that it's their obligation to start telling the truth and to stop collecting these offerings from people. Meanwhile, John and Kate still had this written on their website. We ask others to please pray for us as we go through terrible financial and family hardships. It is hard to let people into our personal lives, but we are praying that people could walk in our shoes for one day and understand that God has given us these children and we're responsible to raise them the best that we can in like almost Louis Vuitton type shoes. I mean, I'll go for, I don't know, Christian Dior if I have to, Kate said. I made that part up. Okay, but that's what I'm thinking and feeling deep down. I think that's what Kate was feeling as well. Please pray that Kate and I can do this with the help of our awesome volunteers that God has provided us. Amen. And I'm willing to bet that John did not write that statement. (laughs) Although Kate is very wise. She makes sure that it comes out like he's the one who's saying it on their website. The next chapter, chapter 51, is entitled College Funds. It's very short. And Hoffman in this chapter just wants to let us know that when the sextuplets came around to their first birthday party, that big birthday party that Kate made such a big deal about, the Pennsylvania Lieutenant Governor, Catherine Baker Knoll, attended the party and announced that the state made full college funding available for all the Gosling kids. So they had full college funds on board if they were to go in state. But in 2008, like Jody said, Kate had many speaking engagements where she told the same story of hardship over and over again while asking for love offerings for her children's college funds. Do you guys remember that I shared with you from this podcast? It was in one of the earlier episodes where... um, The content creator who makes the podcast when he was younger, he actually went to a Kate Goslin. He actually went to a Kate Goslin uh, meet and greet. And while he was there, like one thing that he saw that absolutely stunned him, he wasn't a huge fan. It was just there were a lot of people that were doing meet and greets. But he said Kate's line was like wrapped around the mall. There were so many women there who looked just like her with the same haircut. And he waited in line. He was a young gay man. He waited in line um, to get like something signed by her and get a picture with her. But he said when they got up to the front, one thing that he noticed is that there were just bags, grocery bags that Kate was taking money from people donations and just shoving them down into the bag (laughs) and they were just stacked up behind the table and he said that Kate just kept like signing signing like quickly I just don't even know why you guys make such a big deal about me (laughs) I just don't even understand what the big deal is if you got some money over here okay put it down there I just don't understand I don't get it no big deal over here but here you go little old me she was raking in the dough in more ways than one. Jody saw all of this and I believe she got um, a little bit frustrated, but I'm gonna be real honest with you. She also got a little bit jealous. 
Because everything I've read and the research that I've done tells me that Jody and her husband, Kevin, allegedly asked for TLC to make a contract with them so that they could appear on the show. Because in the beginning, they were just appearing. They weren't getting any money from it. And they wanted to get some money or maybe a little bit more money. When Kate heard about this, she immediately stepped in and squashed that deal because it looked like TLC may have been willing to work with them on it. But Kate was like, no, all the finances from this show should be going to my kids. The show is about my kids. I got the show, Jody. So step off, you know, um, and they eliminated Jody from the show because Kate was like, oh, now I see you. you're just trying to steal the limelight from me. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. Jody was kicked off the show. And then she started speaking out and talking a lot about how she thought the show was not good for the Goslin family. We're going to hear more about Jody as we move on to chapter 52 and onward. I'm so glad that you guys were here with me tonight. I hope that you'll join me tomorrow when we pick up on the next chapter and head down a new rabbit hole.